this is based on a blog post I did a bit uh, about maybe six months ago, three months ago, something like that. Uh, it's how to upgrade to TypeScript without anybody noticing. So let me start off and ask, uh, who here has written JavaScript that's more than 10 years old? Yeah, quite a few people. Um, who here has written any TypeScript that's more than 10 years old? Wow, okay. I had like a whole joke prepared and everything. <laughs> yeah, there's somebody, okay. Um, okay, so uh, next question is, uh, how many people have edited a Webpack config before? Oh yeah, okay. How many people enjoy editing Webpack configs? <laughs> wow, this, this is a really honest crowd. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> um, so the point of this talk is to be able to, to switch to TypeScript on old code, like old JavaScript you have lying around, not new stuff that you're writing, um, and to do it without changing your Webpack config. So uh, you don't want to have to change your build, basically. Okay. So one slide, what I'm going to talk about is how, how to add a tsconfig.json to a JavaScript project. It's pretty easy. I'll talk about that. Uh, and then pretty much you add types, you fix errors, you go to two. And that'll be just a demo. I'll just sort of walk through what you do. Um, so what you do is you stay with JavaScript, and uh, you let TypeScript check JavaScript. OK, so generally you start with tsc init. And then this is sort of a diff. Uh, this is the stuff that the TSC, TSC init will not set for you by default. Um, so we've got allow JS. Can everybody see in the back? Is this big enough? Yeah. Okay. Hard to hear. Though. Hard to hear. Okay, oh, sure. I, I can turn it up a little too. How's that? Is that better? Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. So allow JS and check JS are the basic flags that make TypeScript. Uh, parse JS and try to understand what's going on, and then check JS tells you errors, what errors you've hit. Uh, no emit means that it's not going to try to copy the JS anywhere or build any files out of it. You let whatever existing build you have take care of that. Um, so that's just type checking, essentially. Uh, target ES next is just basically throwing a bone to the compiler to say, hey, any possible JavaScript can show up here. So if you don't, if you target old, really old versions of JavaScript, as your output, even though you're not actually doing an output, then the compiler will say, oh, you can't use accessors or something like gets and sets. Um, and the same thing for module common JS is just making explicit that, yeah, you want to basically use the common JS, no group wire. Um, and finally, resolve, or not finally, resolve JSON module true uh, just makes it so you can require a JSON file. We'll try to figure out what the type is there, as long as it's not too big. I think you can go up to like a couple megabytes before they give out. Uh, and strict false is a good place to start. You can use strict true with JavaScript. Uh, weird things may happen, and you kind of have to understand how the compiler works really well to make it happen, work, but strict false is a good place to start. Um, and then uh, for the project I'm about to show you, it's complicated enough that I needed some excludes. So if you've worked with a tsconfig before, you know sometimes you don't want to compile everything. Um, in this case, there were some tests that were JavaScript themselves. I didn't want to compile them. So uh, I'm going to flip back to, well, you know what? Actually, let me hit escape. Yeah, all right. OK. So the project I'm going to show off is TypeScript ESLint parser. I'm a compiler guy. So this is a parser written in JavaScript that parses TypeScript. Um, and yes, there's some people in the audience who have worked with this before, back when it was still JavaScript. It's archived now. It was upgraded to TypeScript right after I wrote the blog post. So this is an unfortunate problem when you're writing tutorials about JavaScript, is that people come through and upgrade them to TypeScript out from underneath you. Um, <laughs> but it makes it really good for demos, because now it's read only. Nobody's ever going to change it, so I can clone it and show you, show off what to do. Um, so this is a parser, that's why I had to exclude some JavaScript files, because the tests are JavaScript or TypeScript files, and I don't want to try to compile them. Okay, so um, the first thing you do, for, also for TypeScript, if you've done TypeScript, you're probably used to saying npm install, at types, blah, types, blah, types, blah. So this thing uses node, jest, uh, some specific things like estree, shell js for shell commands, eslint scope. So some of those are specific, like near the bottom. I'm not going to make you wait through npm install. I've already got it set up. Um, so let me just show you. There's a tsconfig I showed you. 
And I'm going to make sure that that works. So I do TSC. And this is not a super fast laptop. You get a lot of errors. OK, so everything is working. You got a lot of errors. Uh, like a lot of errors. <laughs> like, like a whole bunch of errors. OK, so um, let's look at those errors. Uh, I'm going to start off with analyze scope in part just because there's actually not that many source files here. There's like four of them. And let's just start on the first one. Um, also, it has some interesting errors in here. So uh, I'll start off at the top here. Uh, oh, uh, this is Emacs. Uh, so follow-up question. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So how many people here use Emacs? Wow. That's way more than I thought I'd see. I thought I was going to see it. LA, basically. <laughs> so anyway, so this is Emacs. Uh, if you're used to VS Code, there's no hover. Well, there's not hover by default. Uh, watch the status bar for types and things and errors. So for example, my cursor's on an error here. It says, cannot find, oh, sorry. I cannot find module ESLint visitor keys. Um, so I also couldn't get squigglies to scale up for presenter mode, so it's like back, pink background for errors. So. It's Emacs. Um, so there's a bunch of a bunch of stuff that isn't found or is sort of just any. So these things aren't found. They're just any. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but the first thing I want to look at is just sort of page through here. I'm going to jump down to the first error, actually. Um, so there's a bunch of uh, classes or types here uh, that are AST nodes. So this, this parser is producing things like identifiers, things like class declarations, things like vari variable declarations. Um, and it turns out it's not able to find any of them. So we've got a function expression, function declaration. All of those are not recognized. And the types are there. They're just not being imported properly. So in TypeScript, you do something like um, import identifier from ES tree. Uh, but identifier is a type. And so when you run this at runtime, the JavaScript is just going to crash, or not going to crash, you're going to get an error because identifier is just a type. There's no such thing at runtime, and so you can't do that. So uh, TypeScript has these things called import types. They're sort of like the dynamic imports from, uh, I think, 2017 or 18, to the ECMAScript for 2017 or 18. Um, and there you can say import what you, what you would have written in a require and then dot, and you can specify type. So you can do this everywhere. There's like, you saw how many errors there were. You don't really want to do that everywhere. Um, so you can extract that out um, to a type diff. So you can do this. And if I get this run on the first try, uh, our PM is not here. He does this amazing stand-up routine where he tries to write a type def live on stage and fails repeatedly. <laughs> um, he's going to be so jealous because I did it right the first time. Um, OK, so now identifier is this. And, and you see, actually, we've translated this into TypeScript syntax down here. This type identifier because identifier, the, the, print, the printing is not quite right. Um, you can F12, or sorry, you can jump to definition. Uh, you can jump that to definition, and there we are inside of ES tree. Um, so that's great. You can stick a whole bunch of those at the top of your file, and you'll be able to fix all of your type imports that you couldn't do otherwise because it's a JavaScript file. Um, but there is a trick you can do. Uh, you can still use a DTS file in your JavaScript project. So what I do in sort of, oops, that's not right. What I do in basically any, anywhere up to a medium to large project, I create a file called types.d.ts. And instead of this, I do this. Completions are kind of broken right now. I'm 307 beta, I think. And then I type it in. You can do this. Now, this is kind of odd for a number of reasons. One, it's TypeScript. So yeah, there we go. Let's see if that worked. I may have to restart the server. Yeah, I have to restart the server. So let's save that. This is 
an Emacs thing only. On VS Code, it would pick it up. But um, if you do it manually with Emacs, it's fine. Uh, oh, I have to save that file too. Yeah. Nope, I got to restart the server again. Okay. Did it work? I'm not sure it worked. Yeah, it worked. Yay. Hooray. Okay, we're back. Now notice I have hit F12 here. I jumped to that there. Now this is weird because this is a module because we have const blah equals require. We have a whole bunch of requires. Um, we shouldn't be able to see global stuff, but we can. So you notice what I did was this is not exporting that type. It's just sort of saying type this and it's global. This is not great if you have a gigantic project, but if you have a small to medium project, just stick everything in all your types in the global space for a JavaScript project, and you can just magically use them without having to worry about importing them using the import syntax back over here. All right, so that's sort of one of the basic tricks of making it sort of sane and easy to use a job, all JavaScript project is have a DTS along the side where you can put all your complex type syntax. Okay. The next interesting trick is here. So let's look at this. So there's this class here, a new pattern visitor. Um, the error actually is interesting because it says expected zero arguments, expected zero arguments, but got three. So if we go look at this class, it's actually kind of funny. There is no constructor inside this class. It's supposed to get its constructor from this thing called original pattern visitor. An original pattern visitor comes from this file which we were not able to resolve. If you look at this squiggly here, it says something like, couldn't find a declaration file for this thing, blah, blah, blah. And so I said, well, I couldn't find a declaration file for that, so this is any. Um, and it turns out any doesn't have any constructors at all. And when you try to construct something from it, uh, it just says, well, I expected zero arguments, and you gave me three. That's not gonna work. So uh, let's go back to type CTS and do a thing in which we fake this entire module. Um, and this is pretty useful. You could, you could create a version of this module and upload it to definitely typed and go through the definitely typed process. Um, but before you do that, you probably want a local version to make sure your types actually work. So you can use what's called an ambient module, which is a nicer name for fake module. Um, and so let's see here. We've got this. So it's declare a module and then the thing you wanted to import in the first place. And then you just write inside there as if it were a fresh file, whatever module you wanted to write. So in this case, we want to say export equals time. Nope, I have that there. Let's see. Uh, and we also have to actually write the thing. So. Um, let's just give it a super fake constructor to start off with. So in real life, I'd be going off and looking at the actual JS to figure out what the type of this should be. For here, I'm just going to fake it because I don't have time. Uh, it does not like it because, ah, it's an ambient module, which really just means it's a fake declaration. So I cannot give it a body. Yes. All right. Let's go back to the original position. Yeah. All right. No more error. And we have some nice errors, sort of follow-on errors, like saying, I don't know what visit is, I don't know what right-hand nodes are. Um, based on looking at the JavaScript file, um, those are actually methods over here. So it looks something like this. So I can go here, and now it says that node is not assignable to parameter type node. Well, that's because it doesn't know that I'm using the ES tree node, so I can say this. And that should be good. Yeah. And so now you can pass nodes. And you can go back and forth and look at the actual JavaScript file, look at the class, try to figure out what the types um, try to figure out what the types are and so on. Um, and you can write an it's it literally is the exact same syntax you would have in a separate DTS for a module. It's just nested inside of another file. And as long as you never have any exports or imports or exports in the outside here, then We'll continue to treat, uh, oh yeah, I should actually show you this. You can actually have more than one. So you can do the same thing over here. Uh, this, clear module. And you can put a whole other module in there. 
Okay, uh, how long have I been doing this? Do I need to stop here? I think it's been going about... It's been 17 minutes. Okay. We don't have hard requirements. Okay, I didn't want to... I didn't want to... But um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I would I would send it through JavaScript first unless you had a bunch of JS doc already. Kind of silly questions, but once uh, all the errors have been resolved through their ETS file here, um, everything being typed, is it once you're ready to move over to TypeScript, especially, is mm -hmm. it as simple as just renaming the JavaScript file extension to TS? That's a good question. Um, I need to think about the global thing. I'm pretty sure the global thing would actually still work, but you do have to have some work to do on the side of, um, like, you can't use const equal require, you have to use import equal require. So the syntax is a little bit different. Um, I believe we have code fixes for most of those, so you, you, if you switch that to TypeScript, um, I'm not sure I want to try this live, but I can. Uh, so let's do that. So analyze scope to analyze scope.ts. Let's get rid of that. And let's just restart the server just in case. Okay. Now we ought to have a whole bunch of underlines here. No? All right, require call may be converted to an import. So let's try that. Okay, so I this is Emacs, so I don't actually have the key bound that does convert all in file, but in VS Code or something, like when you click, it doesn't immediately do it. It asks, stops and asks, do you want to do just this, or do you want to convert all of them in the file? So you would do that, but do it all in the file, and then you're going to get another thing. It says JS doc types may be moved to TypeScript types. 
you do all that in the file. So let's see if that works. Yeah. So it just copies the function, the stuff from the JS doc down into the type type signature. Um, I'm not sure about the global trick. Actually, why don't we check? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, let's see here. E yes, it looks like the types are not coming through. Yep. Okay. So you'd have to do something different for the global, global trick. You can import types now. So you can switch these over to being real imports and exports and so on, probably. Yeah. Yes? A little bit of a plant question, but you started um, you started this talk by saying, uh, I don't want to change my webpack to .config.js. Yep. Say I had a webpack that config.js, and I wanted that to be well typed without like fighting with webpack until I could read a webpack that config.js. OK. Could I use this JS doc stuff to like give me, to so, so to speak, well, well type my webpack.config.js? Uh, you can type your webpack config if you have the webpack DTS around, and TypeScript you can find it, and if you're willing to just like turn on check.js and then put a type annotation, and, you know, basically JS doc on top of the webpack config where you say module.exports equals something. If you say at type, whatever the webpack type is, then you'll get types. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, it'll still be wrong, though. <laughs> so, um, if it can generate types, or, like what the type should be from JS doc, do you not need JS doc anymore? I. Uh, that's a good question. So, um, in JS, we don't read. We, sorry, I take that back. When you're in JS, you know, when type when you're in JS with TypeScript. Uh, we will read type annotations, but we'll put an error under every single one of those because TypeScript's opinion is that a JS file is going to be given straight to a browser. Now, that's usually not the case, but um, if you're in TypeScript, we're conversely not going to read the JS doc. So the JS doc may be there, but it's not actually going to inform the types at all. So that's why you have the refactor. I'm not sure I quite answered your question. Like if, you, if you're using TypeScript fully, right, you're using yeah. JavaScript. Do you really think you need the JS talk anymore? Oh, oh, uh, no, you don't need the you don't need the types anymore. Um, so full confession, I wrote the refactor that does that. It's really hard to remove the types nicely, and also we weren't quite sure that we should be deleting code, deleting any code that people had written. So, yeah, uh, I think there was one question over here, maybe. No? Okay. So. Just wondering, has has Emacs started work on dark mode? Uh, <laughs> that is a good question. So I'm I'm really old and yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. There are dozens of us. Dozens. Follow on the flow question. You said change extension to TS. Does that is it a hack that works because the syntax is similar? Or does it actually parse both types? Uh, so it's a ha it's basically a hack. There are a couple of types that we recognize and say, please don't do this. Here's the here's the refactor to to not do this. Um, but I added that for JS doc support. So uh, I think it's question mark. Does it flow have a postfix question mark or a prefix question mark on types to say that something could be or null? Prefix. Prefix. Yeah. So. If you have a type like that in your TS somewhere, you can right click it and it'll say, please use or null or undefined. Or you can use or null if that's the type you want to use. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's kind of a hack. It's basically, hopefully, it's the same. And if it's not the same, you have to fix it. But th the places that I've seen, unless you're like writing React literally, the types for React, um, most people's types are simple enough that they don't have too many troubles. Uh, should I turn over to the next person? I don't know. Sure. Uh, maybe any more questions? Looks like not. Oh, one more. Would it be a good idea to work with the uh, React and Angular teams, like one of the major producers of Webpack uh, configs uh, out there, to actually have their uh, types uh, annotated in the uh, web that, uh, configs that they generate? Uh, sounds like for, a good idea. You when, when they're using the, like, for like, example, when React's using their TypeScript file. Right. Um, you should talk to Ben. He's the plant who asked the question in the first place. He's, he's been thinking about that a lot. So if you're interested in that, you should ask him what he thinks about it because he's, he, was, he was talking about it to me today, right, right before we came here. So I was not too surprised at the question. 
All right, so I think uh, up next is Orta. So. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan.